shock that exceeds any that has happened in any of our lifetimes. Uh, if you think about what happens to societies or what happens to business or organizations after such a shock, a whole set of underlying principles that they were built upon turn out no longer to be true. Uh, for any, you know, in Kenya, for example, in 2007, you transacted by handing someone um, cash and them handing you the thing you had bought. By the middle of 2008, the vast majority of Kenyans accepted as a matter of routine that you could move money routinely without being in touch with each other. When, when COVID started, one of the, I think, most important parts of what we were doing and what um, Safe Hands was doing and, and, and everyone on this call is getting people together who may not have often worked together. Um, so we call ourselves a coalition because we had people from um, the, the private sector, we had people from NGOs, we had donors, we had bankers, we had people in the government, everyone came together to sit around a table and say, how do we do anything that we can to solve this problem? We identified direct cash transfers as one of the key pillars needed to happen to ensure that there wasn't political, economic, food unrest. Um, and what started off as us trying everything very quickly ended up being that we were focused on lobbying and advocacy. We were fortunate in that in South Africa, we do have quite a strong coalition approach um, to the work that happens in education. So um, that was really important for us to be able to um, connect fairly quickly and fairly um, uh, rapidly to be able to respond. Traditionally, Acumen's bread and butter is making early stage equity investments. So, you know, post COVID, we'll go back to doing just equity. But what we learned in terms of the process of how quickly we could move and how quickly COVID forced us to move, um, there are lessons in there that we'll take forward to our regular investing. And I think that that is a bigger question for all of us, you know, government and non governmental partners. Um, I think that we could do a better job of, of modeling how we allocate resources so that county hospitals were not actually as overwhelmed um, as, as they were. So one of the challenges that we have is how do we create a sense of urgency when as humans we have difficult times feeling the sense of urgency. Um, and this is, goes back to one of my previous comments. I think now is the time to get back together and say, what worked, what didn't work, what committees worked, what frameworks worked, how do we put these processes in place today to evaluate what's going to be happening in the future and start solving from now. I suppose takeaways from this exercise for, for me is that collaboration needs to happen, but it needs to happen before a pandemic hits and right? before a crisis. But I think the key thing, and I, and I think a, a real insight on what makes for an enduring and robust partnership in a rapidly changing space is not over anchoring in a narrow part of the problem, but really finding a broader systemic shared interest and saying we're all working together towards that. And that then allows people to shift and pivot and find the ways that they can be most valuable, or in some cases fade into the background if their capability is not needed. Mm -hmm.